So I saw this tweet. And this tweet said, if you're a hopeless romantic seeking a high level partnership, I 10 out of 10 recommend serial dating paired with celibacy. And the replies were really insightful. Listen to those. Somebody said, tell us more. I'm heavy on the celibacy. I don't like to serial date. Teach me your ways. Serial dating is not only a fun experience, but helps you refine your likes and dislikes and non-negotiables. It also helps you recognize patterns in male behavior oh, well, and helps you set personal developmental goals for yourself. Basically training and practicing for marriage. And it's funny because I've been serial dating, pairing it with celibacy. And I felt exactly the same way, but I didn't really know how to put it into words. So we're definitely gonna talk about this today while we cook. So today we're making chicken teriyaki with a homemade teriyaki sauce and chicken thighs as we talk about dating, okay? If anybody's interested in the recipe, let me know and I can definitely drop it down below. I'm just gonna be like talking as I cook. So we're seasoning the chicken first. It's a very simple chicken, salt and pepper, garlic powder, ginger, and paprika. That's it, we're keeping it simple because the sauce is very flavorful. Even the sauce is quite simple. I tried to find a traditional recipe. We'll see what you guys think of that. But yeah, so I'm seasoning the chicken first. I'm going to sear it and then cook it with the sauce. So, ooh, let me start making the rice first and then we're gonna get into the topic. Rice is cooking, pan is heating up. Let's talk about dating. The reason why this tweet resonated with me so much is because I was partaking in serial dating without the intention of falling into a monogamous relationship. A relationship is something that would kind of get me off track right now. So dating for me, I've been doing it intentionally, but not to be in a relationship. I've been doing it for the sole purpose of understanding myself better through others. This person is talking about understanding your likes, your dislikes, all of that stuff through dating. I've been on the apps, girl. I have been on the apps. Okay, I've been on two apps. I tried Raya, couldn't get accepted, still waitlisted, and I am just, you know, on a break right now, but there was a point in time where I was actually serial dating through the apps. I would go on five dates in five days. It was a great time and my belly was very happy. I was eating good. I was drinking some nice alcohol, some nice cocktails for free 99. It was fun. I wasn't out there with the intention of free dinner. Okay, so like this tweet said, serial dating, it's a fun experience. You get to go meet new people, you get to get cute, look like your best self, go out, not know what to expect. Best case scenario, you have a great date. Worst case scenario, you have a great story. I thoroughly enjoy it. Obviously there are some experiences that are not enjoyable at all, and you just kind of take the L. I haven't really had many of those, you know? Like, I've had experiences where I'm just like not impressed and not pleased, but I kind of go home and I'm like, eh, this is part of it, and I'm okay with that. It's a great way to test your social skills. It's a great way to understand yourself better and see how you are in a new environment, with new people. Let me start frying some of these pieces of chicken. Let me tell you about a couple dates that I've been on. There's this one week in particular that I was just on a bunch of dates, like a ridiculous amount of dates. I literally couldn't remember their names. I had my notes out to keep track of all of the people that I was seeing because I didn't want to mix them up. And, um, it was a great time. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Through this week of dating different people, I learned a lot about men, myself, what I want, what I don't want, and it was really interesting. Boy number one made me realize how important chivalry is to me. He wasn't chivalrous at all. I knew that was important to me, but I didn't realize how much I hated it when a man isn't chivalrous. I feel like it's very easy to be a gentleman, in my personal opinion. So why not just be one? I'm just like, okay, cool. I'm sure you're a nice guy. He's not the guy for me. So that's what guy number one taught me. Guy number two taught me how important it is for someone to make me laugh. He didn't make me laugh at all. Guy number three also reiterated that because he made me laugh a lot. And I was like, damn, I'm enjoying this a little too much. Anyways, he has a girlfriend now. Guy number four made me realize how important it is for me for a man to ask questions. Did you guys realize how many men will go on a date, talk about themselves for an hour and a half, 
and then drive you home or walk you home and be like, oh, I had the best time. And you're sitting there like, where are we on the same date? There's so many men that are so delusional that they think that a date is amazing because they spend the whole time talking. I literally had to ask a man, hey, what do you know about me? Crickets. We went to this Italian restaurant. Great place. Would totally take another friend there. And um, I realized that he was talking the whole time. So I waited and I waited and I waited. And I stopped talking. I literally stopped talking. It, I, I think he was trying to fill the silence because he realized I stopped talking. And then eventually he's like, oh, you don't have anything to say? I said, no. You, you, I mean, you haven't asked me anything. And he's like, what? I was like, yeah, I mean, you haven't, you haven't asked me anything. And then I waited for him to have an answer, and it was just... Crickets, bitch. Crickets. Tip. Call a man out if you're not feeling satisfied with the date or the energy or whatever they're giving. You don't have to sit there and suffer. Call him out. So then he asked me, oh, so do you have siblings? And at that point, I was like, oh, you actually just don't know how to have a conversation. Like, <laughs> It was just some weird small talk questions that I was like, Half of these I've answered, half of these are in my hinge bio. So I'm gonna put some fresh pieces of ginger in this teriyaki sauce and then just take them out after. Just some big chunks to infuse the sauce. Um, I don't want it to be too strong. So what I think this original poster means when they say that they learn their likes and dislikes, it's like when you go on a bad date, you're hyper aware of everything that's bad. And when you go on a good date, you're hyper aware of everything that's good. Even if you don't like the person, you can still make a mental note. I'll give you an example. There's this one guy that it just wasn't there. The romance, the spark, the chemistry, it wasn't there. But he had so many amazing qualities. I genuinely just wish that it was there because he's so awesome. Like he was just such a sweet guy, you know what I mean? Wasn't there. But I was able to pick up on a lot of key traits that he had that I was like, you know what? The future partner that I end up with I hope that he has some of these traits. And yeah, I feel bad saying that, but it's just a part of dating, you know what I mean? So you're gonna meet some people that you don't vibe with, but you're like, oh, I fuck with their energy or the way they do this or the way they do that. And honestly, I love that feeling. There are some bad dates that make me hyper aware of certain bad traits existing in men that I didn't know before, you know what I mean? I didn't realize how big it was for me for a man to actually ask me questions. I know it sounds so simple, but it's not until you start dating that you realize, wow, like, I want someone to hear me and to listen to me. You learn so much about yourself. I also learned what a great conversationalist I can be because I was on dates with people that were shy. I didn't realize that I was carrying a lot of the conversations I had with people until I went on these dates with people that don't know how to carry a conversation. And I was like, oh, I kind of know how to keep shit going, which was very interesting because I spent a long portion of my life being shy. so understanding that now I no longer identify with that was very, very interesting. But one thing about this tweet that I realized is a key part of this all is celibacy. The celibacy is crucial because you're able to think more rationally, AKA you're not getting digmatized. I'm gonna put sesame oil even though the recipe doesn't call for it. You think more rationally, you think more logically, but also you avoid that attachment that comes with having sex with someone, right? I believe in soul ties and spiritual connection. You don't get the energetic soul connection. You don't get clouded by a good time and you're able to think very logically. I think that serial dating is great. Honestly, I think when you're not looking for a relationship, it's the best time to serial date because you're actively getting to know yourself through other people. It's very intentional. You're on a date and you're able to assess the entire environment. While you're on this date, you're watching how they're acting, how they're treating you, how they make you feel. If they make you feel good about something, you become aware of that and you're like, oh, I like that. If they make you feel bad about something, you're like, oh, this is a new turn off. Didn't realize I hated this. There's so many things that I learned that I hated just by going on bad dates or mediocre dates or even good dates with bad men. Do you know what I mean? I realize that half the time I'm on a date, the date is just mirroring me. A lot of times I think someone's funny, but they're actually just a reflection of my humor and they're just laughing with me and maybe they have good banter, but they're not actually funny. And I didn't realize that. I thought a lot of men were funny and then I look back and I'm like, were they funny or was I just laughing with them at my own words? Which is very interesting to think about. I learned things about myself that I wasn't so proud of that I'm like, oh, I don't take pride in saying this. Maybe I should work on this. Intentionally dating with the sole purpose of getting to know yourself 
game changer. If you meet your soulmate along the way, cool. But going in with zero expectations is the key to it. It's actually such a good time. I 10 out of 10 recommend it. I really do. Okay, I took a little break because the chicken was taking forever to cook. But now we're making some veggies. They're gonna be very simple. Carrot, purple cabbage, and white cabbage in here from the farmer's market. They pre-cut it, I love that. And we're gonna make some of that and then we're gonna put the chicken with the sauce. Here's our plate of cut up chicken thighs. Then we're just gonna like drizzle the sauce over or mix it together, I don't know yet. And here is the teriyaki sauce, which you can't see, but you will. Okay, so another part of that tweet touched on recognizing your non-negotiables, patterns in male behavior, set personal goals, and it's basically training for marriage. Let's touch on the non-negotiables. We have preferences and we have non-negotiables. At least most of us do. I hope you do. There's nothing wrong with having a preference. I think everyone is entitled to having that because why shouldn't you? Um, our preferences are things that we prefer. Duh, like I prefer a man who's tall. But if I find someone who loves me the way I need to be loved and has everything else, but they happen to be 5'11", I'm not gonna be like, oh, I don't want him, he's 5'11". You know what I mean? I'm 5'8", by the way, I'm a tall girl. I would say that I'm pretty reasonable when it comes to my preferences. And then we have our non-negotiables. So going on these dates, like I said, made me realize how important it is for me to have a gentleman. When I'm not around someone who's a gentleman, I feel annoyed. I feel like, why can't you just do this thing for me? It's a, it's a non-negotiable for me. It doesn't have to be for everybody. Some people do not care at all. Me personally, why am I carrying bags when you have hands? I'm so sorry. That's just my personal opinion. And again, not everybody needs to live like this and I don't think there's anything wrong with seeing it differently than me at all. But to me, being chivalrous is a non-negotiable. And I will pull my weight as well. Don't get me wrong. I'm not sitting here like, ooh, I just want to sit pretty and do nothing. I'll pull my weight in other ways. Trust and believe that. Think about all the failed relationships you may or may not have been in, right? These relationships probably taught you so much about yourself that you never knew. But in these relationships, you probably have to go through heartbreak, maybe some trauma, maybe some sadness, da 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 But through serial dating, it's like you get a sped up version of that through other people. Heartbreak is one of our greatest teachers. And if I can experience the lessons that heartbreak gives without the heartbreak, I'll take it. This original poster said it's basically like training for marriage, which I couldn't agree with more. You are literally practicing how to be a partner to your future partner. Maybe not marriage if that's not what you believe in, but you're literally getting the blueprints. So I don't see why you would do it. I think celibacy is key to really, really reap the benefits of this. However, if you don't feel like being celibate, then don't. Fucking don't. I think the best way to do this is to serial date with a friend with benefits on the side. Do you know what I mean? Obviously communicate what you're doing with said people, but if you have that one partner that you're intimate with, but you're going on dates with other people, I feel like that's the best way to do it, in my personal opinion. If you do this method, you might not find your person by serial dating. But when you do, you'll be a lot more ready than you would have been otherwise. I can guarantee you that. It's not a must. If you're not comfortable with serial dating, don't do something that's out of your character. It is not a must. You don't need to do this, but I say why not, right? Okay, I know I changed, but I wanted to get comfortable because this food took so long. But let's try our creation. Mmm. That's fire. And it has the perfect level of spice to it. Mmm. Wow. So to conclude the video, go on some fucking dates, okay? This is your internet big sis telling you, go on some dates with zero expectations, stay celibate if you can, have some fun, get to know yourself, and see what happens. 
I 10 out of 10 recommend it and I will continue to do that. I took a little dating hiatus. I got back on the app yesterday. Let me know if you want me to keep you posted. Or maybe do like a first date get ready with me or something like that. I could totally bring you guys along on that journey. I'm gonna go eat this bowl of teriyaki and watch my show. I'll see you next time. Bye.